Kolmogorov Complexity Using Prologue. This is number three in a mini-series and part of the Deconstructing Dembski uh, major series. Uh, we've got a lot of ground to cover today, so let's get right over to the terminal. So the example that I'll give is a, uh, since this is kind of a, a, a biblical, uh, <laughs> you know, intelligent design uh, kind of uh, series, uh, let's give a biblical example here. All right. In uh, the beginning of Matthew, it gives a genealogy of Jesus. So Jesus was um, the, uh, you know, they thought he was the son of Joseph, right? And Joseph's father was Jacob, and Jacob's father was a fellow by the name of Methan, and Methan's father was Eleazar, etc. Okay, so let's uh, take these facts here, this, this fact of, you know, who begat whom, and uh, actually encode them in prologue. Let's translate this into a prologue program. We're actually going to be doing prologue programming for the first time today. That's pretty cool. All right. So, here's what we do. Let me get rid of this for the moment. All right. What we need is is we need a uh, editor window. So let me just resize the terminal window here to about half the size, so that we can see both the editor and the terminal window at the same time. And what I'll do here is I'll just type in E M A C S. All of these strange things. Okay. This is just the editor which S W I Prolog has built into it. So just type Emacs is how it's pronounced and hit return and your computer will think about it for a while and it will pop up a editor window okay so let me resize it here so it fits in the screen so you all can see all right so up here is now is just a, it's, it's kind of like a standard text editor um, you know you're all familiar with the first thing we'll do is we'll open a file here in order to store our prolog program so go over here to new and since this is a biblical example, let's type uh, bible.pl. Uh, .pl, all prologue programs end in this ending .pl. It just stands for prologue. And Bible is just the name of the file. So I click OK. And we get a blank file here that we can uh, do our programming with. Okay? So let's start out here with the first, uh, the first sentence. Eleazar begat Methan. And we'll translate that in. Now... Um, begat here just means kind of the parent of. This is admirable for the King James Version. It has gender-neutral language here. So we'll stick with the gender-neutral language. But how you translate things into prologue, here's how you do it. You identify the things that are being talked about. All right, so, so who's being talked about here? It's Eleazar is being talked about, and Methan is being talked about, right? And then you identify what's being said about them. Well, what's being said about them is this begat thing. So here's how you translate into prologue. Let me just type it in. Begat. We'll, we'll call this relationship that's between them, we'll call it begat. And then we'll say it's between Eleazar and Methan. Okay? Now you might think that you would type Eleazar like this, but, but no. Remember, capital letters mean variables, so, so all proper names have to be put in lowercase here. So, R. Methan. Oops. Like this. All right, and since it's kind of like an English sentence here, we have the subject, we have the verb, we have the object, and uh, we'll put a period at the end, just like you do on a uh, on an English sentence. Okay, so this is basically a programming statement in prologue here. Basically, it names two objects that we're talking about, Eleazar and Methan, and then it says what we're saying about them. We're saying that you know the one begat the other one. It's just as simple as that, right? Okay, so let's type in the rest of them here. So it begat. Oops, not beget, begat. This is a common source of programming errors, by the way. All right, who did Methan beget? Methan beget Jacob. And don't forget the period. Begat Jacob. Joseph. All right, now here's the kicker. Joseph really didn't beget Jesus, right? Uh, Jesus was was begat of a uh, immaculate conception, right? So uh, we won't leave him in here. We'll just uh, say that this is the end of our, our series of begats that's here, right? Okay, so here's how we tell Prologue about this stuff now. Go up here to this, this uh, menu called Compile and go to Compile Buffer. And then it asks you if you want to save the file. Yes, you do. And uh, now Prologue knows about it. So let's go back to the... Um, Go back to the command line here. 
And you see it's printed out a little message here saying that it's compiled this Bible, excuse me, it's compiled this Bible.pl program that you have here. Ah, I can't type today. All right, so let's try it out. So remember, we can uh, we can like, verify some stuff here, right? So let's let's see if it actually made it in BGAT. L-E-A-Zar. All right, now, <clears throat> anytime you type something on the command line, you're actually asking a question. Uh, but instead of, you still type a period. Everything ends in prologue and a period. So basically, we're, we're asking here, did Eleazar begat Methan? And the answer is yes. All right. But remember, we have variables here. We don't have to know exactly which person is being talked about here. We can put a variable in here like this. Say we have X here, right? And uh, prologue will go and find... Eliezer. So this is how we can do it. So so, say we want to translate the question into prologue, okay? Who was Methan's son? Right? We can translate it like this. We can say begat Methan. And then who was his son? Son is a variable because we've, we've done it with an uppercase letter here, right? And it goes and finds. Son equals Jacob. So basically what it does is it goes through and, and searches through your database of facts that you've given it here. And it finds out who the guy is it needs to plug in for. Simple as that, right? Okay, let me show you something cool here. Uh, what if we don't know anything, right? We just want to, you know, do this kind of stuff. Father, son. Okay, there's two variables here. We haven't specified any individual guy. What happens here if I hit return? Well, let's see. Hit return and... Uh, it says father equals Eleazar, son equals Methan. So you can see it's gone to this first fact here, and it's plugged in for the variables father and son, what is in the corresponding positions, right? But notice, it hasn't given me the prompt back yet. It's kind of like waiting for me to type something else. Now there's two other things I can type here. I can type a return, and it just says yes. Or, instead of doing that, I could type a semicolon, like this. And if I type a semicolon, it goes on to the next thing, because this one also matches. All right? Methan is a father, and Jacob is a son. All right? And it, uh, I can hit semicolon again, and then it tells me Jacob and Joseph. Very cool, eh? So basically, this is how it works. This is how you use those variables. You can use the variables kind of like as... as pronouns, right? You could say, you know, him, he, and then uh, Jacob. And he, the father of Jacob, is, is Methan. Very cool, eh? Alright, let me show you one more thing here. Okay? You can link these variables together like this. Suppose I want to find out who, who is the grandfather of Joseph. Well, how would I do that? Well, first of all, I'd find the father of Joseph, right? How do I find the father of Joseph? We got... Father Joseph, like this, right? Now, the grandfather is the father of the father, right? So I can just say begat and father, father. Okay? So see what happens. First of all, prologue will go and it will fill in the correct answer for father here. And then it will go on to this one. It already knows what the father is, right? And then it will go look for the grandfather. So let me type in and show you how it works. There you go. Father equals Jacob. His grandfather equals Methan. Okay? So that's basically, uh, you. that's how you can use these variables to link things up together, right? Now, um, once again, I could do, um, if I just do variables everywhere, I get all the, the grandfather and grandson pairs here, right? Very cool, eh? Okay, so now you know what you can refer to with prologue, prologue, prologue uh, variables, uh, letters, or numbers, or atoms, and you know how to like specify using the program editor facts about these guys. Okay, so let's uh, it's uh, time for some homework now. Let me go assign some homework. Okay, homework number one. So type in the genealogy program shown in the video and play around with it for a while. Okay, no doubt you'll have problems, but if you do, just send me email and I'll, I'll help. Okay, so this is just for your own personal edification. 
Uh, you don't have to, when I'm grading the homework, I, I won't look at this part of it. This is just for, for, for you, okay? I will look at uh, problem number two, though, okay? So make another genealogy database and send it to me, perhaps using your own family, okay? And it, also make it use just begat relationships to represent parent and child relationships, right? We're being completely gender neutral here, very, very politically correct, okay? So mother and father are both represented as a begat relationship. Uh, but make it uh, extensive enough to show some cousins, all right? Make it kind of bushier. Uh, this the one in the in the video was just a linear one. Make it bushy, okay? Now remember how we did grandparent on the command line. We use these variables to link up the queries like this. Okay, so that's the second half of the problem. Find something that you can type in the command line which will give you great grandparents. It's a simple extension of the grandparent one. You can figure it out. Uh, siblings, okay? So hint: siblings are begat by the same person. And find something you type in the command line which will give you cousins.